All right, this week we're going to get into uh, just the basics, um, some stuff that we didn't talk about um, in any of the other videos. I'm trying to put a, a, you know, kind of make a spot where if you don't have any setup at all, meaning you don't have anything done, you can kind of watch this video and be like, all right, this is every single thing I need to get set up so you don't get it in like tiny little pieces along the way. So I'm assuming you have nothing, right? You just bought a computer, you have absolutely nothing. Um, the first thing you would do is you would just go with whatever software you had, adobe.com. A lot of people don't have the newest version of Photoshop. Why? Just get it. You got a 30-day trial. So you go here and you say, Adobe CS6 Extended. Try it. Um, it asks you what language you want. Download a free trial. And then it says, download, join and download. I like to click here on download. And what this is downloading, and if you see, when you have Google Chrome, it, it shows it right here, is it downloads your Adobe Download Assistant. So uh, let me open my computer, my icon that says computer. Um, and if you go to Downloads here, there's your Adobe Download Assistant right there. And if you click on it, it'll say, do you want to run this file? You say, yep. And what that's running, and everything's on the other screen, so I'm going to keep bringing it over. It says I already installed it. Would you like to run the already installed version? I say yes, because I already have it installed. But for most of you, the download assistant is something that you're going to need to download, because that's the thing that allows you to download Photoshop. They have this architecture set up so that it's a lot harder to steal. Um, once you have it installed, it'll show up like this. You type in your Adobe ID. If you don't have one, you create one. Um, You click sign in because they want to keep track of everyone who's downloading their software. Um, and so now you think you've started downloading, but you haven't. You're just in this Adobe Download Assistant. You go down here to Photography. The first one should be Adobe CS6. You hit Download. It asks you where. Um, you can throw it on the desktop. And most of your trial, I should be teaching novice. I need help, baby. I still need help. Um, and here it is. It's saying downloading 1,152 megabytes. It's about 20 minutes. So when this whole thing is downloaded, you will get a folder like this that says Adobe Photoshop CS6 on your desktop. You open it, and uh, you'll click Setup. And then it'll take you through the setting up of Photoshop. And I'm sure you guys can figure that out. Um, again, it'll probably ask you to do in your Adobe ID. I would write that down somewhere so you have it. Um, but all it's doing is it's giving you a controlled program from which to download uh, Photoshop through and the assistant stays on your desktop and it can you can be used it for like downloading any software um, all right so let's open CS6 pretending that we already installed it and actually I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that because I already have it yes remove it close the assistant and I'm gonna show you setup from the beginning assuming I had no windows open or whatever the default was what is the default here um, let's say we went to Essentials? No, let's say we just went to painting here. All right. And I'm going to start with like having kind of whatever the basics is so I can show you how to set up every tablet and tab that you would need. Um, these, when you click on them, they open up. But I've actually never learned which what, what each of these icons is. So I manually like drag them out. That's clone source. I don't need that. I'm going to close every single one so that I can show you. Go down here to close group tab. Close group tab, close group tab, so that I can show you if I had nothing up, what I would do to pull up all the windows that I need for painting. I would, I would go here, and uh, the first one I would pull up is brush. So that's my, f that's my one that has like the type of brush that I'm in and the tip of the brush. And this is a little misleading because there's two for brushes. There's another one called brush presets. And that's actually your brushes. And you'll notice every time you click on a different one, it changes what the brush tip that's selected is. But you can see there's a lot more brush tips than there are brushes. So I don't mess with these brush tips. I don't touch those. I just, I mean, when I make them, I put them, I, I create them from scratch, I'll, I'll worry about them. But here, I just uh, worry about my brushes that are selected in this list. And I kind of normally have more than however many of this uh, painting set that you guys uh, if you're following along or downloading. But these are the two main windows that I have up. Then another thing I need 
is layers. And layers shows up here with channels and paths. I'll drag channels out, close it. I'll drag paths out and close it. And I'll put them, arrange them back here how I want them. Now with a, sh with a short brushes set, you know, like I have right here, I can put layers here and that's probably enough room. But if I wanted brushes to go all the way down, then I would maybe move layers to over here. And then bring brushes if I had like more brushes. But let's just say I did that. Um, and then the other thing I need is colors or color. And I put it there. I don't want navigator. I don't want swatches. Close those two. And I like color right here. And the important thing for that is to make sure it's HSB, which is hue, saturation, brightness instead of RGB. Um, the other thing is uh, where to get these brushes, right? So I showed you in another video, but basically, you go to my website, shaddyconceptart.com, and you go to brushes, and you click on this brush file. And when you click on it, it'll start downloading it. Um, it's not super huge, but brush files can be up to like 70 megs. They're usually not too much bigger than that. Um, so we'll wait for that guy to download. And again, once that bad boy downloads, you will find him in your downloads folder. So desktop, if you go to your My Computer or Downloads, and you'll see the brushes here. I have uh, WinRAR. WinRAR is another application. And you know what? Since I'm showing you every damn thing, if you need to download WinRAR, if you don't have it, WinRAR. Go down here to WinRAR. I'm scared of the of the ones that are advertised. Let's see if this is the correct one. Went to the third one down. Yeah, definitely not the not the uh, sponsored link. Download WinRAR. Get it free. Put your contact information and click continue, and it'll be free for a while. Um, but that's the program I use to kind of unpack just about everything that comes compressed instead of WinZip. I think WinZip makes you pay. WinRAR stays free for a while. Um, okay, so when, I, when I'm in WinRAR, I, I double-click on that. If I go back up, you can see when you double-click on that icon, when you double-click on that icon that's downloaded, click on Chat Brushes, and uh, it'll be right here. Shad brush wire leaf gamo set. And you know what I do? Because I'm kind of a simpleton, I just like to drag this thing onto my desktop. So assuming I did that, I can close that, close that. Um, I dragged it onto my desktop. And there it is, shad brush. And when you click on it and you do properties, you can see that it's an ABR file. That's what the file type for brushes are. And I have actually a folder full of brushes, and they're all ABR files you can see right here. And I just keep my favorite brushes here in this. Uh, ABR file folder. So then from Photoshop, let's say I reset brushes. No, I don't want to save them. So this is what Photoshop started with, is this set when you first loaded up CS6. So what I like to do is go here, go down to replace. I don't want to append or anything else. I want to replace them. And I find Chad Brush Wire Game of Thrones Leaf Plus Cloud. Bam. And it replaces them. If you add it to it or you don't replace or you just say load, it'll tack them onto the bottom. So then you'll have all the ones that are there plus the ones on the bottom. So you can keep stacking brush on brush on brush. Um, I don't like to mess with that. I just like to replace them entirely. Um, the other important thing uh, that is nice to, that is really important to my workflow that I didn't talk about at all, but it's super critical, was the way my tablet is set up. Um, so I have a Cintiq 22HD. When you hit this button on top, it shows you how you have everything set up and you'll notice I'm left-handed so everything on the left side is disabled and everything on the right side is uh, has the button set up because I use my left hand to draw um, and the pen has stuff on it too so let's go to that setup I'm going to go Wacom open my Wacom tablet properties and let's see if we can get there actually I don't go there the hard way very often I don't know how to get there the hard way. But if you can find your control panels, 
which I'm sure you can do on your own, just type in control panels, Wacom tablet properties, assuming you've already installed the drivers for your, uh, for your tablet. If you have an Intuos 4 or Intuos 5 or any kind of Cintiq, it'll do. I think the Intuos 3 will work too, but a Bamboo or any kind of tablet I wouldn't use. I don't recommend them, and I don't, I don't allow them in my classes because part of what makes painting your painting flow happen is the ability to set up these buttons to have hotkeys because they instinctively become part of your workflow. Now you're using two hands instead of one hand. And a lot of people like to go to the keyboard, but you can have your hand over here on the right side. You can hold your hand right here. Your thumb is like hovering over all this stuff all the time. And then your other hand is just kind of moving around where the pen is. And that makes it so much faster. So you'll notice the left side, I have everything set to disabled and the right side, I have all my stuff set up. And I set it up a very specific way, and if you're following along and you want to, I think you should set it up this exact way, and at least try it out. And I know everyone has their own ways of setting things up, but I think this way is just generally pretty awesome. Um, and just try it out, see if it works for you, and if you have tweaks to it, changes to it. Um, the bottom four, I think, are critical. The top four, you could kind of do what you want with. This is just what I like. Um, all right, so for the right ones, going through these. And if you want to know exactly how to set these up, also on my site here, there is a page you can download that shows exactly how the setup happens. Now, this was on a 21. This was on an Intuos 4. And right now I'm doing it on Cintiq. But it's the same kind of thing. Four buttons, four buttons, and there's a touch wheel. Um, this one has a slightly different system because the touch strip is on the back. But it's basically the same idea. So you can kind of see exactly how I set up. And I even have the setup here for an Intuos 3 because the buttons are laid out a little differently. So if you can grab that, you can follow along. But I'll show you exactly what I did. So this top one here, modifier. And then I click on the Alt button. Now the weird thing about the Wacom is you can type in custom things for each one. But if you want it to be Alt, Shift, Control, Left, Middle, or Right Click, you have to do a modifier. You have to select Modifier. Whereas for the next one, I'll show you. The next one is a keystroke. You click keystroke and you can set it up to whatever keystroke you want. Now you hit clear. Now any button you accidentally press will show up here and be a part of the keystroke. So you can't type anything in except for exactly the thing you want. Like I'm holding down control right now and it's not showing up yet. But as soon as I hit Z, it does control Z, undo. Now if I cancel this, let me see what I had it before. Control Alt Z is what I want. Now, I don't want Control Z for this. I want Control, you hold Control, Alt, and Z. For Max, you figure out what that is. If it's something else, Apple, some Command, or something Z. Um, and I hit Control, Alt, hit Z, it shows up, and then I type in Undo underneath it. And it'll say here that it's set to keystroke because I, I put in a custom keystroke for that second one. Now, the reason it's Control, Alt, and not Control, Z, is because Undo is Control, Z, but step backward is Alt Control Z, and that would that allows you to take multiple steps backwards. Um, I'll show you as I go. Let me open a file right now. So what that does is right here, I'm going and making another layer. I clicked on this button here to make another layer. Um, and I'm, you see the brush getting bigger and smaller? That's the touch strip, touch strip on the back. You'll see that in a second. But uh, the, the reason I did undo there is because uh, it's at 40%. Let's make it really dark. Let's make the color darker. So if I go stroke, 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 and then I hit undo, 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 undo. And so I, as, as the many times I hit the button, the more things it undoes. And so that's why I want it to be... Uh, step backwards, because that continues to step backwards instead of just undoing one thing. Got it? Um, the next one down after undo is redo. I go to keystroke, and that one is control, shift, and Z. You hold down control, you hold down shift, you hold down Z. On Mac, it's shift, command, Z, maybe. And then you type in to here. you got to click on the separate field. If you keep typing, it'll obviously just throw more junk in here and click redo. Then the bottom one is another keystroke that's grabby hand, and I like to put space, and I just, it's just space bar, okay? Now, the reason I do that, because it has one, I think, that is 
pan and scroll, but I don't like pan and scroll. It does the same thing as grabby hand, but it does all this unnecessary animation and bullshit. I don't want any of that. I just want grabby hand, which is spacebar. Now, the way this practically comes into play is you're not seeing when I was painting what buttons I was pushing. You weren't seeing any of these four buttons that I was pushing. But imagine that my thumb is hovering all the time over alt, undo, redo, and grabby hand. It's just hovering over these four buttons all the time. And so now if I tell you, if I narrate while I'm painting, um, right now I just hit alt. And alt gives me the color picker. That's why we selected alt. So that what that allows you to do is if you're picking black from here and you're painting into this, let me pick something that has a little bit of like translucency to it. And let's say I wanted to blend this color into the neighboring color. Again, alt is right there at my thumb. Hit it again, grab that color. Hit that again, grab that color. So it, what it allows you to do is it allows you to blend, because you'll watch how quickly it goes to the color picker constantly. It just goes to the color picker for a split second, and it allows you to get those in-between colors instead of having to select them up here. So Alt is just the most critical hot button that I use. I use it for everything. Um, and then Undo is undo, 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 like that. And I have about 20 steps of undo. You can set it to more. I think, but I'm not going to do that. I like 20 is fine. And then redo, 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 redo. And now a lot of times you see me move around the image, and what that is is grabby hand. When you hit that space bar button, again, right here, grabby hand, I hit that space bar button that's hot key here, I can move around the picture. Um, the zooming in I'll show you in a second too. So then the next thing is uh, the top buttons. Now, the top one, the first one at the top here, I like to go to modifier and say it's shift. I think shift is good because oftentimes um, I like to hold down shift. And again, I'm, imagine you're not seeing it, but my thumb is hovering here over shift. Um, it gives me straight lines when I hold it. Doing alt, select a different color, hold down shift. I'll show you that in a second. Um, so that's shift. And that's why I like it. Um, it just gives me straight lines, which I occasionally need. Um, the next one as I just is a new one that I started setting up. I'll go to keystroke. It's just the X button. Um, it's called Swatch Swap. And I really just wanted to name something Swatch Swap. Swatch Swap! And then you go here to the element. Uh, the reason I like Swatch Swap, and what it does is, is let's say you have a layer mask on something, which is this button right here. And we talked about it a little bit, but what the basic element of it is when you when you look at what happens to these two swatches, when you click on layer mask, these two become just black and white because black, as we know, erases. It erases out of the layer. And if you paint with white, it comes back in. So layer masks were a great way we showed on that painting uh, or on the painting we're going to do and all the time how it's just a safe way to erase. Um, and instead of going over there and clicking, you can just. Paint in, erase out. Paint in. If you had like McNulty in there and you were painting and you wanted to not go to the hot key, you see me not going over there, but you see him switching because I can go from, from paint in to erase out. So it switches those two. It's basically just to paint and erase out of layer masks quickly. Um, so that's swatch swap. Next one, mode. Now mode is not a huge deal, but it's a little annoyance. It's the letter F and I call it mode. And all it does is switch between the three modes that Photoshop can display an image. This one where you can see the tab, this one where you can't see the tab, and this one where it's black or all around. And the main reason you need this one is because a lot of times you have multiple images open, you'll see all the tabs up here. But on this one, on this mode, if you hold down, if you hold down uh, grabby hand right here, and you're trying to, you hold on grabby hand, you want to move it around, I'm clicking it down, it's not moving around. You have to hit mode, to be in this kind of move around mode for some fucking reason. It's, it's super annoying. So that's why I have mode always set to that. Um, and then that last mode, I don't really do anything with. I mean, it also has move around, but I need to see my, I need to see my, um, all my stuff. So I never have that one set up. So that's mode. The last one up here is keystroke control M and that's curves. And what that is, is this right here is control M the curves and the reason now it says here layer one mask what I want to do is cancel that and put it right here actually I'll just go to the layer that I'm on um, 
But yeah, the top one, this very top one right here, is the hotkey for curves. And when it brings that up, it allows you to change your colors. The RGB is moving all the colors lighter or darker. The red just moves the red more or less red. So above is more of that thing, and below is less of whatever this the word is. Um, green, same thing, more green or less green. And then blue, more blue or less blue. So let me cancel. Um, and the cool thing about curves, too, is like let's say you want um, more red in the highlight but less red in the shadow. You can move it up in the highlight and actually tweak this so that the shadows are cooler and the highlights are redder. So you can adjust the colors and here you can see you can see where like this gradient works. This is affecting the light areas, this is affecting the medium areas, this is affecting the dark areas. So on the graph where these two things meet, that's where it affects where it shows kind of what it affects. Like you want the highlights to be less red, the opposite of red is green, so they'll get more green and then you want the shadows to be more red. Um, it can get gross really quickly, but um, it's a good if you only use, and if you want to make these go away, you just drag them out of the screen if you only have one. Because sometimes you get too many and it becomes cumbersome and annoying. So you just drag them off and they'll go away. Be back down to one. If you take them all off, there'll be nothing there. So I use that for all, all, my, all my adjustments. And you see the red one stayed, and now the RGB one is good for making it, whoops, see I accidentally added an extra one, is good for making it darker and lighter. So that's curves. Um, and then one of the most important ones here is grip pen. Now this one I have zoom in and zoom out, which are um, super critical to have on the pen. Now this one gets the most guff. People hate this one. If, they, if they're used to having their right click or whatnot on zoom in, zoom out, they really don't like this one. But this is what I do. I do keystroke, control minus, which is zoom out. And on the other one, I do control equal. Now if you look at your keyboard, equal and plus are the same thing. But... If it's shift isn't held down, it says equal. So it looks like control equal, but it's actually control plus. Um, and notice I had to click right here. I was on the functions, and I had to click on the pen to make this menu show up. So I forgot to show you that. Um, if you click here, the eraser, erase is set to erase. Calibrate is to calibrate your monitor. Um, um, but yeah, and another thing to keep in mind about the functions, if you have a Cintiq or an Intuos 5 or something that has two sets, make sure the right one is selected. Because if you click on the left set of buttons, because, you know, I have two sets. I have ones on the left and right. And you do all that work, you set them up for the wrong buttons you don't use. So make sure right is selected. Another thing that um, older Intuos tablets, the, like the three don't have automatically, but the new ones already have automatically, is this touch strip kind of system. And the way the touch strip system works is they have this button on the side, and the Intuos has a button in the middle of the wheel that every time you click on it, it cycles between one of the different kind of modes. Now, the cycling happens so slowly that it makes it useless except for for one. You can't like be clicking cycle and then go on to the next thing because it takes a second to register that you've switched modes and by the time that happens, you're like over it. You can't use it in a workflow. You can't use more than one of these in a workflow in my opinion. So I click so that it's on brush size. Oh, and I lost my Wacom, let me bring it back. Oh no, here it is. So when you go to touch strip here, it's saying the touch strip for me is on the back of the tablet. It's not on the front of it. On the Intuos, it's the wheel. And on this one, it's a strip. And the third one, everyone is set. The first one is set to auto scroll zoom, which I don't care about. Cycle layers, totally useless. And brush size. Now, they just manually did it for you by default. But basically, if you go to keystroke, you can see bracket up and bracket down. Now, if you move your touch strip and it's going the wrong way, like you want moving it up to make your brush bigger and moving it down to make your brush smaller, then you just switch these. You know, clear and then do right bracket instead of left bracket. But if you like the way they're set up, then do one bracket, two brackets. Sometimes back in the day, I would put two brackets in a row. That would like make it scroll even faster. And I'll type in brush size. This one is absolutely critical. And I use this one all the time. Oh, wait, I just made the mistake I was telling you guys not to make. I was set to left, and I needed to be set to right. Anyway, it's by default set up, so no, no big shakes. But that one is really critical because that, if you'll notice, you see how the brush is getting bigger and smaller? I'm using the touch strip all the time for that. Now, a lot of people like to use their pen for brush size. 
or they like to hold down right click and do a scale, which I just never have done. It's not a bad way to do things. I just don't do it that way. I like zoom in on my pen because the pen is a clicky analog type thing anyway. So the zoom in makes sense for me because the pen, a lot of people put the brush size on their pen, like down and up scrolls brush size. But like I want my brush size to be very analog, like very silky smooth, like up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down. And so I'm constantly hitting that touch strip that's behind the tablet to kind of nicely zoom up and down, nicely zoom up and down. And then I zoom in and then I grab grabby hand and move around. Then I zoom out, zoom in, make the brush smaller. Hit X. I'm on the layer mask. Oops, I hit mode instead of X. Bring it back. Hit mode, hit mode again. If I was doing any painting, I'm going to make a new layer. And I wanted to blend a color. I'm using Alt again to select that color and to blend it into the color that's next to it. And of course, if you really want your blend to be silky smooth, you can always go here to Mixer Brush and just get in there and just actually blend the color. So that's the bulk of it. Um, and then the only other thing that I use on a regular basis that I thought I would show you guys because I just really like it and I want to pimp their software because it's great is um, a software called XN View. So I'll show you how to find it. It's called XN View. Um, and it should show up as the first one, free graphic photo viewer and converter. I just really like this software. It looks a little bit ghetto because of the, you know, whack fonts and stuff. But click on English, if you're English. Click on the top one here. And don't click on this. They all have these, like, fake ones. Click here for download. And then it says, which one do you want? 7, Windows, or Mac? I want Windows 7. And then you want zip file or setup. I, I do download setup. And... This program, once it downloads, you can install it. It's so awesome because I just really like it for the way it views photos. Let me see if I can find a nice photo folder that um, would have some cool stuff that we could look at. Need to make sure to not pull up anything that's NDA. That's the problem here. Okay, here's a folder full of stuff. So what I do is I right click on it and properties and it tells you what you want it to open with. So a lot of times your programs, when your files, when you double click on them, they'll be set to open with Windows Viewer or whatever, some Windows Photo Viewer. I set it to XN View and then I say always use the selected program to open this kind of file. So I say that and I hit OK. OK, so that means every JPEG or whatever always opens like that. So there you go. When you double click, it opens really large. And what's nice about that is that um, is that when you're on here, um, it's a you hit spacebar and it just scrolls through photos. If you double click on anything, it like it opens up the folder that it's in. You have all your folders right here. If you click on anything up here and use the arrow keys, the arrow keys like kind of cycle down and around, and you can like go through and like find different. You can just kind of move up and down and along the grid. It's really analog, so you can, like, say you want to make that bigger. If you, It's so intuitive. Like, if you want to make the file bigger, you push plus. Or even the scroll wheel, scrolling the scroll wheel on your mouse up and down. Um, if you have it clicked down here, if you have it in this mode, spacebar goes forward, too. And then hitting escape goes back to this mode. Um, or you want to just have it be like this and kind of cycle through your images down here. It's kind of nice because it's so analog. It's so light. It's such a fast, easy, light program. And I find it really awesome for browsing photos, way better than uh, almost everything out there. All right, so that's the basic setup. That's the basic software I use. That's where to get it. Um, I really recommend getting the latest Photoshop. You have 30 days to try it out. And then after that, you have to acquire it <laughs> in whatever way you see fit. Uh, I think if you use Photoshop for a living, and for your livelihood, then you owe them $700 or whatever it is, right? I mean, if you're paying for art school, you're absolutely silly to not be, um, not be, not be paying for a full version of Photoshop. Just get one. Or, you know, whatever. Fine. We'll get, get it however you need to get it. But make sure you have CS6. I think it has the Mixer Brush tool and a couple other things, and the gray interface makes it a lot better and a lot more useful. 
Um, and uh, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, email me here. Let me know if you have any questions about setup. And we'll see you next time.